in a completely public project, one where everything is open source, how do you handle private development? As in not blasting out all of your security vulnerabilities out to the public before a patch is available and shipping to the distros. This is not something that I or many of you likely spend really that much thinking about, but it is incredibly important, especially for maintainers like Daniel Stenberg, the maintainer of a little known project called Curl. Yes, that Curl. One relatively common method to handle this is develop the patches in private. Do not push them out to the public repo, at least for a period of time, and then discuss with the affected parties on a private mailing list. One of the most popular mailing lists to do this is something called Operating System Distribution Security Contact List. And a lot of the major distros are on this list. You've got your FreeBSD, your NetBSD, Oracle Solaris, along with your Linux distros like Arch Linux, Chrome OS, Debian, Gentoo, Microsoft Linux Systems Group, Oracle, Red Hat, Slackware, SUSE, Ubuntu, WinRiver, basically every upstream that matters and a lot of projects that do their own thing as well. This is a very important mailing list. If you are on this mailing list and you're not going to be on it unless you maintain a distro and that distro has a reason to be on that list, you are expected to be keeping an eye on it to, you know, keep track of what's actually going on. But more importantly, when a report is sent into this mailing list, it may be requested to be under embargo for up to 14 days, preferably shorter in the range of seven or so days. However, not all vulnerabilities are going to be private. You know, when it's something big, like a heart bleed, a spectre and meltdown, all of these really big name vulnerabilities that are blasted out to the public. Sometimes there's going to be a blog post that breaks a story. Sometimes it's already been patched publicly. In those cases, Obviously, they can't go under embargo, like you can't just embargo the entire world and there's no point trying to put the distros under embargo when it's already a public story. For those vulnerabilities, they shouldn't be sent to this mailing list. Instead, they belong in another mailing list. They're still very important, but that mailing list is the OSS Security Mailing List Charter. Now, for the past 12 or so years, Daniel has been working with this mailing list, sending up vulnerabilities whenever something comes up that is important with curl. So far, he sent up around about 130 vulnerabilities. Most of them were low or medium, but there are going to be those occasional high-level vulnerabilities that need to be dealt with basically as quickly as possible. However, recently, he hasn't exactly been happy with how the mailing list operates, leading him to write this blog post, Pre-Notification Dilemmas. So, until very recently, they had a very different policy about how these vulnerabilities should be handled. We recently updated our security processes in the curl project. We have noticed that we have previously several times landed fixes to security problems that were defective and in some cases did not even fix the reported problem correctly. I believe one reason for this is that we had a policy, this is an internal policy in the curl project, to make the fix into a public pull request no earlier than 48 hours before the pending release. 48 hours is enough to make all the tests and CI verify the fix, but it is a very short time window for the community to react and to be able to test and find any problems with the fixes before the release goes out. So he would go to the mailing list, get an embargo, it'd be like, you know, 10 days or something, and then two days before everything goes public, then the patch would need to be done. But a patch that doesn't fix the problem or introduces a whole different problem 
isn't exactly a great patch and you pretty much want to avoid that whenever you can. So to combat this issue, Curl introduced a completely separate policy for how this should be handled. This is documented over on their GitHub in a pull request. Allow low plus medium issues to be managed through plain PRs, update the bug bounty to reflect current reality. As an attempt to do better, we have tweaked our policy. If a reported security problem is deemed to be a severity low or severity medium, we will instead allow and rather push for turning the fix into a public pull request much earlier. We will however not mention the security aspect of the fix in the public communication about the pull request, but only talk about the bug fix aspect. So don't make it really obvious this is fixing some security problem, just say, hey, we dealt with a bug. This will allow us to merge fixes earlier in the release cycle to give the bug fixes more time to mature and ripe in the repository before the pending release. It should also increase the chances that we can do follow-up fixes and truly make it a good correction by the time we do the next release. Hopefully, it leads to better releases with further regressions. But this approach isn't without its risks. Of course, the risk with this is that a malicious user somewhere finds out about a vulnerability this way, earlier than 48 hours before a release, and therefore gets an extended time window to perform nefarious actions. That is why we also limit this method to severity low and medium issues, as the ones rated more serious are deemed too dangerous to risk. And that makes complete sense to me. If you have a known high or extreme severity issue that, you know, could take over every server in the world, you don't exactly want to make that public before everybody that needs to patch it has the ability to patch it. So with those things where it's like, okay, maybe this causes like a overflow in this case, but it doesn't really cause anything dangerous okay, maybe we should probably fix that. It doesn't really matter if someone finds out, but anything more than that, maybe it's a big deal. But those smaller issues where maybe it's exploitable in this really weird circumstance, but not really doable in the real world, it doesn't really matter too much if someone happens to know about that exploit. Yeah, maybe a bit of damage is going to be done, but it probably makes way more sense that any patch that's going to address that works and the problem just goes away. And with the release of curl 8.0.0, he implemented this new method, but he still felt like it was a good idea to make sure the mailing list was well aware of these vulnerabilities to make sure they can go and patch them as the patch is coming out. I emailed the distro's mailing list again, like I've done so many times before, and told them about the upcoming six vulnerabilities we're about to reveal to the world. This time turned out to be different. Because of our updated policy where the fixes were already committed in a public Git repository, the distro's mailing list policy says that if there is a public commit, they consider the issue to be public, and thus they refuse to accept any embargo, which at least at the face of it makes perfect sense. You can't embargo something that has already been made public, and anyone who's seriously malicious will probably be checking out the commit diffs and will notice that something is out of the ordinary. And over in their policy, it specifically states this right here. Please note, that in case a fix for an issue is already in publicly accessible source code repository, we generally consider the issue public. And thus, you should post to OSS security right away, not report the issue to Linux distros this mailing list, as we'd merely redirect you to OSS security anyway, and insist that you make the required posting ASAP. There can be occasional exceptions to this. This is what he's trying to do such as if the publicly accessible fix doesn't look like it's for a security issue and not revealing this publicly right away 
is somehow deemed desirable. In particular, we grant such exceptions to Linux kernel issues concurrently or very recently handled by the Linux kernel security team. In all other cases, you'd have to have very sound reasoning to claim an exception like this and be prepared to lose your argument, and if so, to post to OSS security ASAP anyway. So he decided to shoot his shot anyway and see what happens. What they call embargo, I of course call heads up time. I argue that while the fixes are public, the actual vulnerabilities and the security issues those fixes rectify are not. As in, nobody's written a blog post about them, nobody's talking about them, they are still only contained within this repo. There's no public CV or anything like that. The only way you would know about the security issue is if you go and read the repo. It takes a serious effort and pretty good insights to just detect that one or more of the commits for the pending release are done because of a security problem and then even more so if you want to convert that suspicion into an actual attack vector. Now, considering this blog post exists, I probably don't need to tell you um, how it actually went down. So, basically, they were like, yeah, uh, we don't care. They maintain that while they could make an exception for me slash us, this time, this is an exception, and their policy says this is not acceptable for embargoes. If we make commits public before telling distros, we may not ask for an embargo. And he doesn't mention this in the blog post, but they probably told him to just go and post on OSS security instead. He has a, uh, a different idea. He still feels like he's in the right, and they should place this under embargo, obviously, until someone else goes and discovers it. So, instead of doing the open source security mailing list, he says, I thought we were doing this for their benefit. I was under the impression that we actually help distributors of open source operating systems by telling them ahead of time what was going to ship very soon that they might want to get a head start on so that their users stay protected. I've been told in very clear terms that they do not want to be notified about vulnerabilities ahead of time if the commits are public. I have informed them that I will not tell them anymore until they change their minds because I think our updated security process can make our releases better and I think improving curl and making better releases is more important than telling distros ahead of time. I cannot understand how this stubbornness makes anything better for them. For me, it takes away some amount of work, so I will manage just fine. For Kel users in the wild, this will probably mean that they will get security patch Kel releases from their distros a little slower in the future. We rarely see Kel vulnerabilities rated higher than medium, so this means we'll effectively stop emailing distros about pending flaws. We are still allowed to tell them about critically scored vulnerabilities, but I must confess, I feel less inclined to do that than I used to. I think this is a really interesting case because the mailing list is pretty much in the right here. And from their perspective, it makes perfect sense why they wouldn't want to place this under embargo. But I can also understand the dev's perspective where this patch, while it is available in a repo, it's been named in a way that unless you knew it was for the security vulnerability that you don't even know about in the first place, you probably wouldn't know that it has to do anything with security anyway. And that's ignoring the fact that if someone does discover it, there's no reason to keep the embargo around anyway, so the embargo can then be lifted. Do you feel like this is one developer stepping out of line, trying to do something that doesn't make any sense in this system, or do you think a bureaucratic system is holding back something that otherwise would be incredibly important? I would love to know your thoughts. So if you like this video, go and like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon Scrub Sully Barrow Pay link in the description down below. That's going to be it for me and... 
W get is better.